Hello and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In this video I want to show you the uh, do while loop and do a little example with it. So the do while loop is very much like the while loop um, except for the fact that it is what's called a post check loop instead of a pre check loop. So to understand this let me go ahead and write a, um, a little Scala program inside of the REPL. And let's do something like this. Uh, var i equals 0 while i is less than 10. I'm going to put this all in one line just because in the REPL it's going to be easy to go back up to it. I would not recommend this format if you were writing this inside of a file. Okay, now the question is what happens if I run this again? Because at the end of this, the value of i is 10. And so if I do the same thing again, well, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything because this says while i is less than 10, it does this. And it checks this condition first thing before it does anything else. Okay, this is the while loop is a pre-check uh, loop. The while loop has a close relative called the do while loop. And the difference between the two, as the name implies first, is uh, that it has a do and a while. Um, and you have the statement or the block of code that you want in between. And once again, normally this would be spread across multiple files, but it's going to be easy for me in the REPL to just hit the up arrow and get a single line. Um, the difference between the while loop and the do while loop is that while the, is basically in the, in the order you read it. The while loop, the condition's up front and it gets checked before the body. In the do while loop, the condition is here at the end and it gets checked after the body has been executed. And so if I run this multiple times, you can see that even though I is greater than, or is, is not less than 10 the entire time, we're still getting one printout and we're getting an increment. And this is because the do while loop, the body always gets executed at least once, and then the condition gets checked to see if it should happen again. Um, why would you want to do this? Well, uh, there are certain situations where the code that's going to execute inside of the body is going to set up things for the check. So in other words, the, the body needs to happen at least once so that you can actually do an appropriate check on it. Uh, and you can do that type of thing with a while loop if you set up your variables so that you're guaranteed it's true the first time. Um, but sometimes it's just it flows better to use a do while in order to do this. And to help illustrate this, I want us to write a little bit of a program. Um, we'll call it the do while calc. So I want to write a little uh, calculator. And the way this calculator is going to work is we're going to have a var for the um, current value. And this will be a double, and we'll start off our calculator at 0. And I want this to be menu driven. So I'm also going to make an option, and it's going to be a string, and I'm going to start with just the, the empty string here. The while loops like the, or the do while loops as with the while loop um, are statements only. They are not expressions. They do not give you back a value. Uh, also, this condition has to have the ability to change, at least if it's ever true, it would be nice if it could become false. And for that reason, you need to have some mutation in here. And so typically when you're using while loops or do while loops, you're going to have vars. Uh, involved. Not always because it's possible that the mutation is happening like in input and what you're doing is you're just reading more lines and you're not uh, mutating values. But most of the time you are going to be mu mutating values. Um, so I want to keep going. So I want this to be a, a fairly simple calculator where the idea is inside of here the user is supposed to type in um, something. And so we could, to help the user know what they're supposed to do, uh, 
Um, how about we go with plus, minus. Uh, now I think I can probably do this on one line. Plus, minus, multiply, divide, set, or how about clear, quit. Okay, so it's going to print out that line. I was thinking of making this multi-line, so I put in the triple quotes, changed my mind. Uh, so we'll go to a single quoted string. Uh, so basic calculator. We're going to then read what they input, and then I want to do something based upon that. Okay. Um, so I have different cases in here. Case for the string of plus. And actually, um, let's call this on option.trim. So the trim method uh, removes spaces, the leading and trailing spaces from a string. That way, if they happen to type in plus and then a space and hit enter, well, if, they, if we don't do the trim, that won't match this. And that can be confusing to the user when the only things that aren't matching are white spaces. Because the white spaces aren't so highly visible, it can confuse them. Uh, so, in the case of plus, we're going to ask the user to enter a value to add in. And then current value. Oh, well, I don't need to spread this out so much. Okay, so take the current value and add in uh, whatever is read that they typed in. I want to have very similar code for my minus, multiply, divide. Um, as I've said before, this whole copying and pasting code like this should make you feel a little uneasy. And so one way, one thing that you might be thinking about is the question of how could you reduce this? Okay, if you look at what it is that I am doing here, what things are actually going to be different between these, and are the differences small enough? that you could consider trying to do this in, you know, put it in a single function or something like that to, uh, to basically abstract it so that you don't write the code um, you know, multiple times. Uh, in this case, it's only two lines of code, and I, I made changes to both of them. So I'm, it's not clear to me that it's, that it's worth attempting to do any type of, of abstraction. Uh, but you definitely could. Uh, you definitely could have it, since all I changed was one uh, word inside of here and then the symbol here. I could make a function that I pass two things into a string and a function and the string would be appended uh, <coughs> to the end of enter a value and, and printed and the function could be used to to get the the new value. Um, let's actually let's do something else in here as well. Print line this is just for usability print out. You know, if, if you're using a calculator, it's nice to actually see uh, what's on it. We have two other options here. A case for clear. All I want to do with clear is set current value to zero. For uniformity and formatting, we can go ahead and put that down there. Case quit. Well, it turns out in the case of quit, I'm not going to do anything. And then so that our match doesn't uh, cause errors, what if they type in something that's not one of these options? Well, then I should tell them that. OK. Now, why do I want this to be a do while loop? Well, the reason is fairly simply that I need to print out this menu and have them type in something at least once. Okay. 
it's it's not possible to run this program and have it never print out the prompt uh, because the the shortest run is it prints out the prompt and they type in quit and this is significant because of what goes down inside of our condition here while what well while option is not equal to quit okay. so if they ever let's actually move the call to trim to there um, so if they type in uh, if they type in quit it will stop as long as what they typed in was not quit it will repeat the actions and so let's save this and if I run it I can say plus five okay, and now I have a value of five times four and we have a 20 minus six uh, divided by seven and you can see how that works if I clear we go back to zero if I type in quit the program exits out okay so we've just written a, a simple little calculator of using a do while for the repetition and the advantage of the do while in this case is because this part of the code should always happen once. The, the body of this loop should always happen at least once. And that's the thing with, with a do while. You're guaranteed that the body is going to happen once in a do while because it's post check. The condition doesn't get checked until after the body has happened once. Uh, whereas if this were a regular while loop, it's possible the body might never execute if the condition was false the first time because it's a pre-check. So there's a brief introduction to do while. Um, and a short example showing you how you might use it in a menu-driven text program. See you soon.